now is the time to submit your original Christmas song. The Who Is You. If you're a songwriter and would love to be a part of our Christmas compilation project, then you're in the right place. Where can you submit? GMIHub.ca is the place. Please visit our website at GMIHub.ca and click on Family Christmas to find out how you can submit your song today. You could be a part of the GMI Hub Family Christmas Volume 4. This is Cheryl from GMI Hub. Listen, we have had the opportunity to go out into the field and meet some great Christian artists and Christian bands and interview them. So tonight I am so thrilled that we are going to show one of those interviews. It is with Mark Moore, which is the lead singer and founder of the Christian reggae band Christafari, and his protege, Ja Pickney, otherwise known as or Tim Lennard, otherwise known as Ja Pickney. And Right now, right now, I'm so thrilled. It was so thrilling to talk to these two because they have a heart of being missionaries and the, the mentorship that is between the two is just absolutely awesome. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this interview. Hey everyone, this is Cheryl from GMI Hub Online. We are here in Toronto and we have some special guests that we want to talk about. While we're still in Toronto, we have Tim, uh, Tim Leonard, who is actually Ja Pickney, am I saying that right? We have Mark from Christafari. I don't know, Mark, your last name. Mark Moore, Christafari. Moore. Christafari, I keep saying it wrong. But we are so thrilled to have you guys here. And of course, my wonderful co host, Dale Borland. Hey Dale. there, we're so glad you could be watching us right now because Christafari has been a big fan favorite of mine for 20 years. You've been around for like 30 years doing your stuff, man. It's been, it's been great. I remember catching you back at a GMA yeah. with, with the goatee record thing yeah. and that oh, was yeah. oh, years yeah. ago oh, yeah. so man that was so much fun Remember that was a blast I sure do yeah it, they called it the joint I think yeah, that's Which correct I didn't think was appropriate for a reggae <laughs> a Christian reggae band to be playing it we're playing at the joint everybody's like what the heck is going on what kind of right <laughs> that is so Christian reggae band are you well it brings up some memories probably back but you know that's good we, we're gonna talk a little bit of what what your what's going on in the past really quick and then we're gonna go talk about what's happened now because there's so much exciting th things that are happening. Okay, so um, you spent about um, 32 weeks in the Billboard charts after your second CD release on, on third, third, third CD, CD release on Goatee Records. Uh, that was pretty amazing. You, in the top 15 charts. So you guys gotta know this guy knows what he's doing. He didn't realize that, did you? That was pretty cool. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Valiant decision, that was on the charts. Okay. Yep. So now you know, yeah. there you know. Great stuff, man, and Soul Fire got me. Man, that, that was what really got me uh, hooked on you guys. So, yeah, the bomb, big time. So, uh, let's talk a bit about um, what what's going on with your with your wife. I want to just talk about her. She is incredible. Avion is just amazing. Okay, she she is the what we call the daughter of Soka. Yeah, her dad invented Soka music, Trinidadian. So, how did you ever meet? I was in Trinidad teaching a seminar uh, to gospel reggae artists or, or just Christian artists, trying to inspire them to keep preaching the gospel. And uh, her family showed up four hours late for the seminar. Which it's Caribbean, it's okay, you know? Very, very appropriate for their family. That was early now, I realize. And then they gave me some CDs and a bio, and I was going through the stuff a day later, and I popped in the CD because I was curious, and it was blank. Popped in the next CD, and it was blank. I'm like, what the heck, man? So I told my, my host, Don Juan, the guy who brought me out, and I said, dude, it's blank. So Don Juan brought me over to Lover's Lane to meet Avion in person and get new CDs, and then they just started singing around and, and passing the guitar, and I was just floored, and I was enamored. And it was love at second sight. <laughs> the girl could play bass, right? She can throw down. And we, we had a few, a few disappearing bass players, so it was a, it was a blessing. I'm sure she just step in and step up. It's amazing. All right, let's go to Josh. See what's going on with you, man. Now you've been with the uh, Christ of Fire for a while. Well, I, I've sort of been with Christ of Fire for a while. I I met Mark and Christ of Fire when I was 13 years old, back in like '95, I think. Um, but officially 
part of the team has just been recent, just in the last three years? He's in many ways been my Timothy, but over the last few years, it hasn't been a, it's been a mutual thing, or even me looking up to him, which is pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Um, he's just so, so firmly grounded in the word and in family and in roots reggae that I started realizing as we were touring and traveling so much, I had all these ideas that I couldn't complete because it takes, you know, days to do that at home and I don't have days at home. And so I would just say, hey, I got this song. I just, uh, you know, came up with this idea instantly at a rehab center. Uh, I am a brand new creation, or out with the old and in with the new. I'm like, you got any ideas? And the next day he sends me a whole song. And I'm like, I'm liking this. It's like microwave price so far. I, <laughs> he puts in the work. <laughs> and and then we we put some cherries on top and some whipped cream. And then we, we throw the tracks back and forth a few times. And at the end of it all, sometimes he... I, I'm just like, you know what, that's too good. I got to use your voice. Uh -huh. And so we just leave him on the track. And uh, other times he's like, hey, I heard you guys are working on this new song. I got an idea too. <laughs> and, it, and it's just fun. It's, he, there's not many contemporaries in what we do. Well, he's my contemporary. You know, it's funny you, you say that because you actually are, I would like to say you're like uh, the kind of the first person to put reggae and clean mix on the Christian market. You know, because there's been lots of reggae done, and it's kind of like live off the floor, or whatever. But you did, Christafari. It was a nice mix, and people were like, "What?" It took notice, and you kind of put reggae in the Christian market on the map. Yeah, yeah. We we weren't the ones who invented it. I thought I did. <laughs> I thought I did, until I found out that somebody 10 years before me or 15 years before me was the guy who put peanut butter and jelly together. I thought it was like Jesus and reggae, first time, yay! But when I met that person, I wasn't like, oh, darn, it's not me. I was like, yes, more people like me. And when this kid, <laughs> that's what Pickney means. <laughs> when he wrote me a letter at 12 years old, it was the first fan letter that I ever responded to. Probably the only one I ever. <laughs> oh, you didn't hear that. You know, you did not hear that here. Okay. I'm going to be honest. You know I didn't, I didn't respond to yours. Sorry. I apologize. But. You know, when a 12-year-old writes you a letter saying that he had a heart for Jamaicans that are migrants in the community, and it almost felt like I, I was talking to a younger version of myself, and uh, he was inspired by our first album, and I said, well, your, your name isn't Tim anymore, it's John Pickney, because you're God's child, and um, he's not a child anymore, but he's still God's child, and which is pretty stinking awesome. How'd, how'd you feel about that? <laughs> Well, of course, as a as a young teen, you're very starstruck when you get a response letter from your favorite band, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and then a phone call, and when I when I answer the phone, he doesn't say who he is. He just starts singing one of his songs, and I'm just like, What song was it? Me want jet sauce first, and every time you do me put jet sauce first. So my mom said I just went white. Right? Well, um, you already were white. No, 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 I went whiter. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure I'm white? <laughs> <laughs> just on the outside. Yeah. Just you're white on the outside. No, but it, it what uh, what Mark and Christopher I did for me throughout my teenage years was, I, it, I, it's I can't even say what it was. It was, it was just an incredible, like keeping me keeping me on the right path throughout years of my life that could have been very different. Yeah. Especially with reggae. That's especially with reggae. Yeah, but you get hardcore into reggae and it's all it's all weed. Right, and I, I never got into that. I, my mind was on ministry and, uh, yeah, his mentorship and just, I, you know, I was, I was kind of on cloud nine, and it just kept me focused on, on where I should be focused, focused on the word, focused on, on my faith and, and ministry, you know, telling others about, about the Lord. So, And, and a, a, about a year or two later, maybe two years later, I think it was, we came up, our first tour, major tour, was the Reggae Sunsplash tour that took us to, was it Mol T Toronto and then Montreal. Yeah, what was the name of the center? Molson Center or something like uh, that? It was the uh, Ontario Place, Molson Amphitheater. Okay, yeah. Molson. And, and um, so to play some of the biggest amphitheaters in the region and have him come backstage with us, you know, he was all red, young, green, braids. I think I gave you your first dread, maybe. You did, yeah. I gave him his first dread, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> taught my mom how to do it so she could finish I, the Because I was not doing the rest. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, yeah, he learned a lot from us, 
And he, the, one of the funny things was that at first, people would say, is that your son? I'm like, why? Because he sounds just like you. Because he, he was like, that's all he was listening to. And then eventually he created his own sound. And now he's back at a place where he's producing us and he's trying to match our sound, which is <laughs> hilarious. So it's a full circle. But it, um, we then came out a few years later uh, to actually play in Belleville, where he's from and nobody else is from. And then we just came back 27 years later to Belleville again. We've seen each other since then, but not up in, not up in the Great White North. That is awesome. That's really cool. I noticed the connection between Mississauga as well as Belleville. You lived in Mississauga earlier when you were younger. I used to live here. Yeah, you did. Uh, so I used to live in Mississauga, yeah. but only from like age three to yeah, seven. You were so yeah, you were born in kind of the right, right. No, it was yeah. it wasn't. Uh, I mean, I mean. I mean, I guess it, I remember it, <laughs> so it had some kind of impact. But, but you were actually born in New Brunswick, and then you went to Mississauga. Right, but Belleville's home. Yeah, I've been Belleville's in Belleville home, since yeah. I was seven. Yeah, cool, cool. Um, oh, yeah, I want to talk a little bit Sunsplash. No, Sunsplash. Mark, was Sunsplash, that thing you would, remember you used to go to Sunsplash, and you used to take Bibles, yeah. smuggle them in. Tell us a bit about how that got started, and then it changed from you. From what okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that that's a, that's a fascinating story, especially given the company. So, yeah. <laughs> I had one mission, and that one mission was to lead as many people to Christ as possible. Now, I loved reggae, and so my goal was to lead my favorite artists to Christ, Pato Bantan, uh, you know, the Marleys, and, and, and so I wasn't thinking I need to get on stage. I was thinking I need to get to the people that are on stage. So you can't get backstage when you're a white boy from Southern California and you go to Reggae Sunsplash. So I got a little creative. I brought my arts and crafts set to Jamaica, and I brought paper, I brought hole punchers, I brought tape, and I brought every color marker. And at whatever the day was for the Reggae Sunsplash wristband, I would look at it, I would then go and make one in the bathroom, punch holes, and, 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 then, and then just kind of wait for a group of people walking in, and then just kind of walk in like that, you know? But I had Bibles, Bibles, I had swagger. Bibles stuffed in all my pockets. We smuggled in about 600 Bibles. And I saw quite a few artists come to Christ, but I then saw them go astray. So Damien Marley, uh, Pato Bantam, people like that. And so I started realizing there needed to be more discipleship. And, uh, and then eventually God gave us the stage on Sunsplash and that was kind of cool. But because we were touring so much, we couldn't go back to Sunsplash. So I sent this guy, or I encouraged him to go. And what happened? So I went actually to some fest, which is, yeah, another festival similar. And uh, I went with a backpack full of Bibles. Now, I was successfully able to purchase a backstage pass. Oh, you and I didn't have to sneak buy in. Them back then. <laughs> and uh, so I went ministering to the artist backstage at some fest in Montego Bay. And one of those artists... Lieutenant Stitchy yeah, yeah. Gave, gave his heart to the Lord and ever since has been singing gospel reggae music as well. And then he was signed to our label. <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah, it's, there's a lot of things that have woven and, and another artist who came to Christ eventually through those Bibles, uh, Tommy Cowan, Papa San, and Junior Tucker and others. So yeah, it was definitely a fruitful ministry. You also work with Monty G and you got some other guys on your label. Links, Mr. Links, Sherwin Gardner, uh, Solomon Jabby, Jennifer Howland. My favorite is Avion Blackman. <laughs> yeah, of course. His wife takes precedent, of course, and rightfully so. <laughs> yeah. I love that when you talk about this because it makes me think of the one term I've heard you say, or not heard you say, but I read about you was musicianaries. I wanted you to talk a little bit more about that. Like, that seems to be your heart, Mark. That you're, that's the heart of Chris, Christ Starfari, is that right? Well, I was noticing that as we were working with all these artists, that they weren't going out much. Look at the top Christian artists out there that came from Jamaica that used to be secular, and you'll see they do about three shows a year. And a big portion of that is that they operate in the same way that they did as secular artists. They wait for the honorarium. They wait for the check to come. No, no disrespect, 
you know i know pastors who, who move that way too there's nothing wrong with that but i started realizing that if you wait you don't reach as many but if you move like jesus did where you don't get the guarantees you just step in faith every step of the way the ox eats as it's trotting basically and so for a great example is we just did all 50 states in america we had four shows that's all we had we drove in faith trusting that god would provide and 277 shows later all 50 states every single time we said we'll come for whatever you can afford sometimes we even had to pay to come so you know but here we are top festival we flew ourselves out here we trusted god was going to provide and he has he's given us a hotel he's given us food he's given us a stage most important though we're here to give the gospel and in doing that when you marry yourself to god's vision god's commission love god love others yeah. there's wind in your wings you don't fight against that you go with it and you go wherever he leads and sometimes that means being wind driven sometimes that means you swear you're going here oh you're over here yeah. but you just got to trust in him and um so we rely on s supporters like yourself you can go to jobpickney.com click on donate you can go to christsafari.com click on donate and the biggest thing we pray for is monthly partners because we do this monthly we do about 20 to 30 nations a year and every one of those nations we pay to get ourselves there through the support of others and we're trying amazing. to do all of the americas now oh. canada L uh, not, not la hello hello <laughs> usa <laughs> um, all of central america all of south america and the caribbean which is why we're going to barbados and trinidad and tobago after this now i want to ask you about ascend because i think that's an important thing that you got part of your ministry I, I'm, I'm all about that. I know. Yeah. So let's talk a little about Ascend. Ascend is, is a play on words because we want to send people out. But it's about climbing up. It's about going higher. It's about going, getting closer to God and, and um, less about yourself that he may increase so, so that I may decrease. Yeah, that's, I'm saying it right. Okay. And um, so it is, it's 40 master classes that we did online. You can go to ascendmasterclasses.com or just christfry.com and click on it. And uh, we teach all different all different kinds of things. This guy's in, in, in every class taking notes, actually saying, oh, I'm already doing those things. But um, no, it, it's been a real blessing. Our goal is not to say we're the only ones doing this. Our goal is to make disciple makers. Yeah. Very good. Now, what is the next chapter? Looking forward. What, what have you kind of got a vision of doing coming up? Or are you talking about this now? <laughs> I think it stumped him there, Dale. <laughs> you know, the, the, the first thing I'm thinking of is who cares? Because Jesus is coming back soon, and so let's act like it. Let's act like it. The next thing I'm thinking about is don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow's not worried about you. But there are things we're working on. We have a f probably three albums worth of material that, that we're sitting on right now that we're polishing. He's working on a children's album called Reggae Sunday School. Tell us a little bit about that. It's the the second volume in the Reggae Sunday School, maybe series, I don't know. Yeah. And uh, so it's a children's album that's geared towards children without making it, diluting the music. Yeah. Well, I was, I was children's music that parents can handle listening to. That's right. Yeah. I and actually, the Reggae... Christmas uh, Sunday, sc uh, Sunday school was the first we used to play in a radio station. My wife used really? to play a kids' radio station. We used to play that thing like it was every time. Crazy. So the next one, I can't yeah. wait. Absolutely. So I'm I'm mixing it now. Um, it's it's coming together. There's a lot of things on the go, but it's coming. What, we have songs like uh, let's talk about some of the songs. Okay. Joshua fought the battle of Jericho. <laughs> um. Je Jesus loves Jesus loves me. Yeah. Me? Okay. Uh, there's um, Father Abraham. Father Abraham. And then there's, there's a bunch of originals as well. Bunch of originals. I'm having fun with that. Believe it or not, we're even doing Baby Shark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're we're tying it in somehow to Jesus. <laughs> you get get ready. Yeah. It's <laughs> a challenge. No, there's. Um, I'm really enjoying it. There's a song called Winter Man that was done originally by Lester Lewis. So we're, we're kind of paying homage to, to the, the original originator of Christian reggae as well. 
by doing that. So it's it's been fun. We also are about ready to release. It's probably out by now when you're watching this. Uh, I Speak Jesus. And a bunch of new music videos, including a song called Yahweh that is was filmed in Israel. And wow, that place blew us away. Yeah, the Israel tour you had to cancel, postpone, and rearrange. That's crazy. The, the whole COVID thing set everything on us. Uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, we had to cancel two times because of COVID. And then we got there, and the modern-day Pharisees canceled us. And they, they had to, we had to change venues, and they were pro, protesting and, and trying everything that they could to stop us from preaching the gospel. Well, we didn't stop. Amen, amen. I want just to close up our time together, because I know we have, it's important that we get closed up. But I want you to say something for our young artists, up-and-coming artists who are pursuing a career. What kind of advice would you give to them? My advice would be, don't make it about you. Uh, don't even don't even go there until you're firm in the word, because, like Mark said, I, I mean it's not just reggae. The music industry can have a downward spiral. Even if you you've got the right intentions when you start, you need to be grounded in the word. So start there, and then make sure that this is not about your glory, not about your fame. It's all about it's all about His glory. And add to that the. While you're sober, when you're not on stage blinded by the lights, create a wisdom council of the five smartest, wisest Christians that you know and say, your goal is to keep me being who I am now and write out who you are now. I will not do this. I will do this. I think of Psalm 40 when he talks about he won't seal his lips. He won't hide in his heart. He won't, he won't be silent before the great assembly. I, I think about all the fruit of that that can come but then i see the people that just water down and water down and water down is it is it true that that is a that water is turns into an ice skating rink it's not not really it moves too much lake ontario is very very no but this this the fountain they, they make a fountain into an yeah, ice rink yeah that that fountain that you can walk in right now <laughs> but it turns into an ice skating rink right yeah. but what happens is a lot of people become lukewarm and they just kind of defrost, and they're not cool for Jesus anymore. <laughs> Jesus isn't cool. And, and, and so the goal is to keep yourself in check by having that accountability. Amen. Fantastic. I love that. That totally speaks our heart, too. Yeah. The accountability and being grounded in the word. That's just awesome. I love that. Guys, it's so awesome to meet you guys. I was like, I have to... <laughs> I, I heard some of your music in the car on the way up is awesome. <laughs> so I'm gonna I can't speak as fast as you do though in the songs, but <laughs> I have to learn Patwa from you. Anyway <laughs> But it's so awesome to meet Tim or John Bigney and Christafari. Amari from Christafari, it's so awesome to meet you. And guys, I hope you enjoyed this interview. If you wanna know more, go to gmihub.ca and you can learn more about what we're all about. So we'll catch you later. Now is the time to submit your original Christmas song. The Who Is You. If you're a songwriter and would love to be a part of our Christmas compilation project, then you're in the right place. Where can you submit? GMIHub.ca is the place. Please visit our website at GMIHub.ca and click on Family Christmas to find out how you can submit your song today. You could be a part of the GMI Hub Family Christmas Volume 4.